Hi, welcome to the April webcast for Greenlight Group. Today we're going to uh, present on the topic of cloud service automation and operations orchestration as they relate to your company's overall uh, ops. Um, this is from server builds and monitoring to the complex processes such as we're going to demo today on employee onboarding and offboarding. Um, so the demo is going to include a uh, complex uh, CSA server build and service manager change and control onboarding a new employee. And that will include both manual and an automated operations orchestration process. Our presenter today is Stephanie Mason. Stephanie is a principal engineer here at Greenlight Group and has over 13 years experience in system and network administration, including CSA and OO installations and deployment in both Linux and Microsoft. My name is Stacy Madden. I'm the marketing manager here at Greenlight Group. And uh, let me go over the quick agenda with you. And we'll move on from there. I'm going to overview Greenlight Group for you. Stephanie will um, do an overview and discussion on automation and then we'll have the demo. Um, during the course of our presentation, we'll be taking questions. So um, please remember to submit those using your question button through Bright Talks. The Greenlight Group overview. Um, Greenlight Group offers end-to-end -end solutions um, from management, including software, consulting, implementation services, and post-sales support. We have four um, main specialty areas or pillars, um, the service management, operations management, automation, including both um, network and um, cloud, and business intelligence, all the big data um, info. We're headquarters in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, we officially started in January of 2004 and have risen to be um, an HP Gold partner. We were excited last year in 2013. We were named one of the top 100 fastest growing companies in Utah. And the year before that, we're winner of the partner solution offering in 2012. That's a brief overview of Greenlight Group. Feel free to check us out at our website, greenlightgroup.com. You'll find more information on all the expanse of the products that we do and services that we offer. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie, and she can take it from there. Again, don't forget to submit questions if you have them. We'll be stopping periodically to, to check into that. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for our Automation Operations and Beyond presentation today. The HP IT Performance Suite um, uh, is a comprehensive, connected, and flexible. Greenlight Group's um, area of expertise is in IT operations. We specialize in data center and client automations, application performance management, systems management, service management, asset management, and network management. Our recent Greenlight Group OO products include OO integrations for Norwegian Cruise Line where we integrated OO 10.1 with Service Manager 9.3, leveraging OO to automate onboarding and offboarding for employees there. Uh, their onboarding and offboarding process was fairly complex. They were using a change management um, product, product from CA and their their onboarding process had approximately 40 manual steps in it, even though some of those steps could be automated anytime somebody was was um, let go from the company or hired from the company, all of the processes to create user IDs were manual. Um, when we were finished with the project with the project, we, combine some of those processes so that we were able to 
uh, automate about nine of them based on the people who were ready to to ha um, automate their their flows. We were and we were able to consolidate some other processes, so we got them down to approximately 25. We're in the in the process now of working with Oregon State Lottery to integrate 0010.02 with Service Manager 9.3 and 00 uh, with uh, Network Automation 9.2 to leverage the these two applications in a low-touch network device provisioning. What they'll be doing is um, when a new lottery site comes on board, uh, they'll be requesting through, via service manager that a network uh, circuit come online. And once that circuit comes online, then a technician will take out the router. And when they arrive on site, they'll contact their NOC. And the NOC will update the change control and then kick off flows within OO to update network automation and NNMI to automatically provision the network device. So the agenda for our demo today is we're going to take a look at CSA4. We're going to look at the new interface. We're going to request a new server. And then we're going to deep dive underneath and see what's really going on when your, when your customers request servers what's going on in the background and how does that happen. Once we finish that, we'll take a look at a service manager new employee request and what's going on underneath that. And then we'll take any, any additional questions that you may have. And if we have extra time, we can take a look at some additional uh, OO flows. At this point, do we have any questions? No, no questions yet. Okay. Let's dive into the demo. So all of these applications are web-based. We're going to start by looking at the CSA 4.0 user or customer interface to request a server. I can remember my password. Okay, let's try this again. Here we are. So this is the new interface. It's very clean, very easy for your users to request servers. It's, uh, I like to say it's so easy even my mom could request a new server, um, very similar to a Windows 8 tile interface. Uh, we start by going to browse the catalog of available servers. We're going to build a Linux server today. So we start with a few questions. The first question is, what is the host name that you want for your server? And we have a naming convention that we have for those in our environment. So I'm building, uh, I put in my requested host name. I select the memory that I want this virtual machine to have. I select the number of disks that I want, and then I can choose the Linux distribution that I'd like to have. We'll go with RHEL 5, and I'm going to put it in the QA environment, and then I hit the checkout. I set the description to the same name as the host name so that the email that I get from uh, CSA telling me that my subscription is ready is going to be uh, meaningful. I 
then I'm going to uh, if I were if I wanted this machine to be available forever, then I would choose a recurring subscription. If I want this machine to be something that's going to be destroyed after a period of time, then I can select the time period that I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave it as a term subscription. You'll notice that uh, you can't pick a date farther out than a year from today in the term subscription. Now we hit the Submit button. It says that my request has been submitted. We can go take a look at the service request. We could request another one if we wanted. We could reorder the service. If we hit the green light um, link up at the top, it takes us back here. Are there any questions about the new end user interface? No, not right now, Stephanie. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me for a second. Um, I did want to say that this interface is completely customizable. You can add additional widgets or remove some of these if you wanted to. So while we wait for the email that's going to tell me that my build has started, let's take a look at – oh, it looks like that email has popped up. So I'm going to grab my email. And here's my um, email notification from CSA that tells me that my request has been, has been approved, and so the machine is being now built for me. I'll get another notification when it's completed or if it were to fail for any reason. Now I'm going to log out of this interface or actually just change the tab, and we'll take a look at the uh, Cloud Service Automation administrator screen so we can see what's going on behind the scenes. Actually, let's use my user ID since we are um, LDAP enabled. If you've used the more recent versions of CSA 3.2, then this will look fairly familiar to you in terms of the way the tiles are laid out. We have organizations that we can create to um, <coughs> excuse me to allow us to uh, break down uh, different areas within our our. Uh, company or if we were to provide this for customers, um, we have general in information and this is where we can go and customize our portal, set up any of those dashboard widgets that we had, configure the uh, LDAP integration that I used to log in with our Active Directory, um, define who has access set up our email integration, and define our catalogs, and um, how operations will work. And if we, again, if we click on the top URL, that's going to take us back to our main page. Resources are where we configure our resource providers. We have currently right now two VMware providers, one for high I.O. availability, and one for just our regular vCenter. This allows us to configure the integration between uh, VMware and CSA. And then we have a few offerings. If we take a look at the designs, I'll show you the two that we have configured for um, that you saw available to our customers. They're sequence designs. They're the high performance Linux deploy and Windows deploy. Let's take a look at the Linux deploy. So th this is just simply the name that we have associated with it and then the designer where we define 
that it's the vCenter and our infrastructure and server group. And then this is where most of the work is done. This is where we connect our bindings, we configure our life cycle and transmissions, and we set our properties. These values are the ones that get passed back to operations orchestration. This is where we configure also our subscriber options, which were the values that you saw me configure when I uh, made my request as the user. I'm going to show you those. These were the memory settings, the CPU, the Linux distribution, and the environment. Do we have any questions at this point? I guess they're tracking with you because I'm not getting any questions yet. Okay. Um, so at this point, I'm going to take you over to the offering so we can take a look. No, that's not what I wanted. Let's go back to resources and offerings here. I'm vCenter and our high performance Linux. I want to show you the life cycle as we're deploying in the transition phase. In the transition phase. This is where we select the OO flow that does the actual deployment. And when we undeploy in the transition phase of undeploying, we set the OO flow that does the undeploying. Then we go into offerings here. We create the offering. Set our options. Well, these are the options that were that we set as part of our um, design. We can edit those or change them here. Set any pricing models. Add any documents or screenshots that we might want to add. And then we add them to the catalog, which makes them available to our customers. Here are our published offerings. So now I just heard my phone ding. Let's see if that means that my machine has been built. It says I'm now active. So let's go take a look at vCenter, see if we can find that machine built there. And if we take a look at vCenter and VMs and templates and virtual machines, you'll see we have SLC VMQ SJM Test 7, which was the machine I just requested. Now let's take a look at the flow from an OO perspective in the user interface for there. Okay, I'm going to put in my... This is my um, this is my machine build, and it ran through the process here. These are all of the steps. This is where we could go if there was a problem and look to see where something failed. 
you can see that um, we have a red X here near prod because it wasn't a prod box. It was a QA box. And so QA is green. Do we have any questions at this point? Nope. Okay. Let's go take a look at that OO flow. Okay, so this is our Linux deploy from the perspective of OO. This is where things get a little more interesting. So what's going on in order to build that machine is first <clears throat> we get the user information so that we know who it was that requested it. Then we get the properties that I showed you in the design that were the that was the information about the machine. We're getting things like host name, number of of uh CPUs, the size of the memory, uh the environment that it's going to go into. And we find out which resource provider or which v um which vCenter instance we're supposed to build this on, or if we were building this in the Amazon Cloud, we would get the inf information about our Amazon Cloud. Then we check to see which environment it's in. Since this one was in the QA environment, it stopped here at QA, and then it set the network information that we needed in order for us to bind the correct virtual network in vCenter. And then we look for an IP address that's available and uh, we find an IP address that's available in our uh, QA network to be assigned to this VM. We then set the, set the NIC. We notify our progress back to CSA to let it know what's going on and where we are in terms of um, our, of our build. Then we get the um, base customization. We, we check to see if there's an existing customization spec for this virtual machine. There wasn't because it's a new one. And we get, then what we do is we get the base customization spec, and we edit it to add the IP address and the name and things that we need for the new machine that we're about to provision. And then we go through the vCenter cloning and provisioning process. Then we verify that it was provisioned, and uh, we notify back to the uh, CSE process that we, where we are in our build process. And we make some updates. Then we update DNS, our QA DNS server, with the, uh, with the IP address that we were given. We notify that that the flow was completed and resolved. There are a couple of differences. If we were building a Windows box, we would, um, as part of the customization spec, add it to the domain. We'd wait a little bit longer in our build process to make sure we had sufficient time to, um, to allow for those customizations before we would it, we, we sleep for 10 minutes as part of that uh, as part of that build. Are there any questions about our OO flow? Nope, not that I've gotten in so far. Okay. Any questions about anything we've covered to this point? All right. I haven't seen any questions, Steph. If I do get a question that comes in, I will let you know. Sounds good. Okay. So at this point, we are finished covering CSA, and CSA has it connects to OO unless we have any questions, and that's per perfectly fine. If you want to jump in with a question, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at Service Manager now. Okay, so in our Service Manager environment, we're going to log into the SRC portal. Thank <laughs> you. 
Exactly. We're going to add an Active Directory user as part of our onboarding process. This user is going to be a new full-time employee. We enter his full name and the justification, his user ID, and then we hit Next. We select Request Now. The title of our um, delivery information is just that this is um, our new hire. And we can just put that in the description as well. Um, email is fine. Our urgency, if we had any attachments that we needed. And then we can go take a look at the status. Awesome. Let's go see. We uh, okay. So it was just a problem with um, giving us our our approved interface. Our status is dispatched, and I know from experience that if our status is dispatched, then we should be able – that means that it's going to kick off the orchestration flow. So let's go back to our Run Explorer. We have new runs available. Okay, so what we're seeing here is we have a, ch a change order number, C10057, task number T54, and the task we're using is to add an AD user. If we go inside and look at it, um, it's finished. It tells us it was successful. The only failure we have here is on the get users, and that basically tells us that this user did not exist before. We can take a look at the, at the create user here. And it tells us that it created a user account with the container name Robert Jones. And it closed our change task. We can go over to Service Manager and log in. and go to change management, and that task number was 54. And if we go to change management, and not to forgive me, I don't spend much time in change so I need to find the search button. And if I put the change ID T54 in here, look for change. T54. Uh, 
Isn't that my change number? T54. Maybe I'm confused about which server I should be connected to. Let me check that. We look at, okay, let's try here. Make sure I'm on the correct. Yeah, that's the right server. Okay, so search for task 54. We're waiting for that to search. Let's go look at LDAP. And we're going to look at the users. And Robert Jones, here he is. So he was successfully created. I'm not sure what's going on with our test, um, our demo service manager environment. Doesn't look like it's very responsive right now. So um, let's just take a look at it from the perspective of OO, and I can show you. Um, here's the SOAP response. And you can see the body of the SOAP response is successful, that we closed it. We go take a look at what we do in that um, OO flow. While I'm pulling up this OO flow, are there any questions? Hopefully there's some questions, because if there aren't any questions, this is going to be really short. <laughs> I'm not seeing any questions, Stephanie. You may be getting them later in your email. <laughs> okay. I really counted on there being some questions in my... Uh... All right, here's our, here's our OO flow. So what's going on here is this OO flow is intended to be kicked off from a, uh, a change control. It expects some um, information to be passed to it. It wants to know the task ID, the type of user, and the user of the um, the appropriate types are test, employee, or contractor. The user ID, and that's the um, the LDAP user or the Active Directory user. The user's full name and the uh, service manager host that the change request is coming from. So once service manager passes all of these things, and there's one other field that's being passed that we're not asking for from service manager, and that's the name of the, of the task, this one right here that says change order number, task ID, and the, um, and the flow that was being called, that gets passed as well as part of the call to OO. Okay, then back to the design. So once we have once we have those variables, uh, we 
get the time stamp for the start time. Then we check to see what type of account it is. Then we go ask AD whether there is a user with that user ID already. If there is, we check the time and we send a, a closed call back to Service Manager to close the task and say that the user ID already exists. Then the 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 expected response then is that uh, w we intend to um, have somebody manually figure out what's going on. If the user ID doesn't exist, then we go ahead and create the user. Assuming that's successful, we get the time and close the change task with the, with the success code and the timestamp, and everything's good. If that fails for some reason, we get the timestamp and respond back to Service Manager with the close with the failure code. Um, if the type was unknown for some reason, we get the time and we say that the type selected was unknown. But really, you saw um, in the service request interface that they're not they're given a drop down list so it's not like they can select a type that doesn't exist there um, so that's really not an option for them so we're we're both accepting input 200 from the uh, service manager inter change interface and we're writing back 200 excuse me, to Service Manager using the OO interface and uh, closing uh, the change control tasks based on the responses from OO and the, the tasks that have been run from there. So any questions? Please. Free please. I do have a question. <laughs> Yay. Uh, Mary wants to know, what size company um, minimum is the service geared towards? Is it, a customized, is it customizable for a small business? Uh, yeah, absolutely it's customizable for a small business. Um, I guess it would depend um, on really what um how much process you have to to be able to uh automate um whether it would be cost effective for you if you have a lot of of business processes that depend on your IT environment then it would be probably quite cost effective for you to to be able to automate those processes and be less dependent on on manual things and have your your IT staff be more flexible um i guess it would depend on how small we're talking probably medium to large businesses is is really more appropriate Are um are there any questions about um, flows or um, something else that I can show you? Um that uh that's our question for now. Okay. Well, let's see. There's anything else that I have in my um in my OO flows that might be of interest to people. So one of the things that we did um recently was to uh take a 
a an SM, SNMP trap for a flapping interface from a Procurve switch and provide a um, a response back from from OO based on that trap with a uh, that's not what I want with a um, uh, with a link returning all of the See, with a link that returns all of the the interface stats going on with the Procurve switch for um, for the flapping interface, which might be interesting to take a look at. So that's a situation where we're responding to a an SNMP trapper or or a, or a you know a monitoring situation where something's not not acting the way we would expect it to. Uh, we took something that comes out of the box from HP for Cisco devices and reworked it to make it work for uh, a Procurve device for one of our customers. So this is the flow. What we do is we send, uh, it's a little more complicated because of the way the Procurve interface works. We send the username, then we send the password, and uh, set the terminal length. Then we ask for, we send the command show interfaces, and then show VLANs, and then we terminate our Telnet session. So in response to, to this request, let's see, this is SLC VMP Net GLG. So let's go there in our web interface. SLC BMP. Oops. We'll see. MP. Net. Okay. Um, you'll notice as you take a look at this that this interface looks a little different. This is the older um, HP Orchestration uh, 9 interface. It's not as nice looking as the 0010 interface. I don't like to work here if I can get away with it. Um, but because this is running on top of a NetSpy integration, and I'm really having trouble with my passwords today, I really want that first letter to be a capital, and it's just not. Um, this interface is quite a bit different, not as clean or as easy to take a look at. But let's take a look at a... Um, a situation where we had that let's take a look at the last 30 days okay here's the Procurve interface kicked off and this is the result from that flow so we send the username, we send the password, we send the terminal length, we send the show interfaces brief, we send the show VLANs. And as we look at this, you can see that um, the results are not real pretty, particularly when we start looking at the results for the commands. But we were able to um, clean them up so that they're... They're they're at least visible. They we removed um, all of this goo so that it's it's something that's readable. And what we can see here is the results for the uh, for the let's see. This is. Here's the cleaned up show interfaces and VLANs without all the extra goo. And a, a network engineer would be able to pull this out of NNM, follow the link to this report, and 
be able to tell what was going on with this switch based on the results of the flow that got called by a, an SNMP trap. So uh, that's the end of our demo. Do we have any more questions that we might have out there? Um, we don't have any questions right now, but I think sometimes people like to listen to it and go back and watch it again and email you later uh, with questions sometimes when we have as much technical information. So if you can give them your email and um, contact information, that would be great. Sure. I would be happy to answer any questions in email. Um, this was a lot of technical information, and I went through it kind of fast. Um, but my email address is stephanie at greenlightgroup.com. That's Stephanie with a PH. Um, and you can reach me by telephone at 801-890-1233. Um, so, so Greenlight yeah, Group is this... Is this you, Stacy, or me? Pardon? These summary slides about our expertise, is that you or me? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just trying to let you know that if you go to greenlightgroup.com, like I mentioned earlier, you can um, get a lot more information on uh, the different services that we do provide, everything from doing an evaluation of your systems, um, helping do installations and um, post go live support as well. So there's our contact information. Stephanie's giving you her information, and we want to thank you for tuning in and hope you have a great day. And um, feel free to visit our other webinars that are on Bright Talks. Thank, thank you. Thank you.